Hey there folks, it's Desert Fox back again with another Sea of Thieves guide. Today we're going to be changing pace and taking a look at the sloop and how to sail them. Most mechanics we cover will roll over to the other two ship types, but I'll still make later videos covering the Dragon Galley, so don't you worry. Without further ado, pirates, let's get started. The Sea of Thieves is a land of beauty. Its creatures are something else entirely. And here's one now. Full of confusion, he finds himself on dry land, but longs for the sea. He makes his way to his trusty sloop. Uh, he, he spotted us. Let's get out of here, Gerald. First off, if you're playing solo or with someone else, sail a sloop. You have no business playing on anything different. It's not the fastest, but it's the easiest to manage as a solo or duo. We're going to start off with a tour to get you familiar with the sloop. Here's the left ladder and the right ladder to board your vessel or someone else's. Here's an overview of the top deck of the sloop. Here you have the wheel and the compass for steering and navigation. And just behind that, the capstan for raising and dropping your anchor. We have the left side sail controls, as well as the right side sail controls, controlling the speed in which your ship travels. Here we have two cannonball barrels for cannon-related storage. Here we have your left side cannon and your right side cannon for firing cannonballs and the left side harpoon, and the right side harpoon, both with various uses. Here's the front or bowsprit of the ship, the top deck bell, ding, the mast and ladder leading up to the crow's nest, and of course the crow's nest, the crow's nest bell, ding, ding, and the flag box, which lets you choose a flag to raise your colors. Do you see this flag? Do not raise it, unless if you want people to find you. It's the Reaper's Mark flag, also known as the PvP flag, and places your ship on everyone's map. They will know where you are. Now there's a handful of lanterns on your ship which can be doused and relit. It's been debated whether turning them off actually helps, but the way I look at it is, if someone spots your ship just because the lanterns are on, they're probably inexperienced. Not many seasoned pirates will miss your ship, lanterns on or off. Now stroll down below deck, we have the voyage table for placing down voyages. The pet cage for pets. The shelf, which most people just put small treasures here. The map table to figure out where you're going. Here we have the armory and ammo box. Heading down to bottom deck now, first up is the water barrel. Here we have the wood barrel, two food barrels, the stove, grog barrel, and a bed for your lonesome nights on the sea. Up front is the clothes chest, pet chest, equipment chest, and the vanity chest. Back topside, here's Odious raising the capstan to get us moving. It takes a lot longer to raise it by yourself as opposed to with a friend. See, you got it, buddy. Feeling awfully tired now after all that work, aren't you? Now let's do it one more time, only faster. Basically, anything that can be done with two or more people should be, as it's significantly faster. You can also dock rowboats to the back of your ship by rowing up to it and pressing the key to interact. This is a pretty effective way to ferry loot from the island back to your ship, but I prefer using harpoons and don't really use rowboats all that often. They are a great resource for supplies, though. Now, on to the actual sailing part. This is your sail's angle. It allows you to shift your sail to catch wind. This one is your sail length, which is used to control your speed. And there's not really much of a trick to the sail controls, apart from that you want to move your sail into the wind, which can be seen as those little wisps on your screen. You can also raise your sail to stop or make sharper turns. Turning your wheel can also knock out or put your sails back into the wind. There's sound cues for both. Now, of course, if you're not in wind, you only need to angle your sails. Keep in mind that your sail is going to kind of bow outward when it's in the wind. Now, if there's absolutely no wind to catch, angle your sail straight forward. I know it doesn't make sense, just trust me. The waves in Sea of Thieves always travel southeast, so if you're sailing northwest, your ship will be fighting stronger waves, therefore making the ride a bit more bumpy and a little slower. There's a few ways that you can stop your ship. A hard break is dropping anchor, and if you do this, you'll want to raise the sail first, and then the anchor to make sure you can leave fast if need be. I sped this part up because it's important to show that while it's not necessarily the wrong way, it could be done faster. And here's my preferred method, which is simply just raising the sails to stop. It's going to take some practice, and you may have to rely on the hard break for a while, but that's okay. Keep working on it. As you just kind of slow to a stop, turn the ship to have the island on the side of your ship as opposed to nosing into it. But see how much more efficient we could be by just not anchoring? Now you're sailing by an island and after a quick check, you realize you just passed your destination. So what to do now? You could do an anchor turn or handbrake turn, drop the anchor, turn the wheel all the way to one direction, then raise your anchor and adjust the wheel. Boom, anchor turn. 
you also get an achievement by doing this. Unless you know you're safe to do so, I don't recommend doing this fighting other players. It only takes a few seconds to do, but those are crucial seconds that can leave you vulnerable. We can also perform what I call a harpoon break, which is one or two pirates using the harpoon to grab as far behind as possible and reeling in a little bit on both sides. This will slow the forward momentum, ultimately bringing the ship to a stop. A harpoon turn is pretty simple. Start by sailing past an island or object, hit it with the harpoon, and once latched, pull and turn. Definitely some practice is needed for this one, as you're basically turning blind while staring at whatever you're harpooning. Now, I believe that supplies are the lifeblood of a ship, so if you don't stock up, you'll run out eventually. Consider firing yourself out of your ship cannons or hopping off to scavenge island barrels for more supplies. While you do this, the ship keeps sailing and you get supplies. Win-win, right? And then of course when you're ready to go, mermaids take you back to your ship. And here's another example except on inactive forts where a ton of supplies can be found in a small space. Remember that win-win comment earlier? Well, not every time. If you're solo island hopping like this, make sure you're aware of where your ship is going before you launch out. Otherwise, you might crash into an island in a storm. Which brings up a good point. This storm is just not a place you want to be sailing. There's no reason for it unless your island is inside of it, which you could wade or just go in head first. If you do find yourself in a storm and want to get out, I prefer to angle my sails straight and then catch the wind. Since the storm causes your wheel to turn on its own, except for near islands, you're going to have to keep it straight. Just make sure you're repairing and bailing when you need to. Now keep in mind as well in a storm, your compass is just gonna spin like crazy. You might catch glimpses of what direction you're heading, but you'll likely need to watch the wind direction and the map to really know for sure. Now this from a storm, but if you're gushing water as you're steering, you likely have a tier one hole near your map table. Run down and patch it. We'll go over ship damage and tiers of holes in a bit. Now onto navigation. The compass rose is the compass in the bottom right of the map. I cover my ship with the compass rose to tell me what direction I'm needing to go. I've added these artistic, colorful lines to this picture as well as a key to help visualize the extra directions you can call out to your crew. Remember, communication is key to your success, and in this example, I'm heading north by northwest. We've talked about this in the past, but don't put kegs on your boat if you can avoid it. If you can't, put them in your crow's nest. Now on to ship damage, specifically fire. That water barrel down below can be used to douse the flames to prevent damage to your ship. Just don't forget to fill it up after. You can also throw water buckets from the ocean. Look at all that damage. Keep in mind the capstan can break as well as the wheel which makes it harder to turn and the mast which will either crack or completely fall down disabling your ship. Now on to how to fix it. Run on down and grab a full inventory of wood from the wood barrel and find the interactive points on the ship parts and start patching. If you can, try to keep up with these repairs before they get too bad, otherwise you'll take a huge hit on the ability to sail. Now the mast will require a bit more detail. Basically, when it falls down, you need to go to the sail length and pull it back up as if you were raising the sail itself. The tricky part is, is that if it's not raised fully until it stops, it'll fall back down. Or if you try to lower the sail before the mast is patched up, it'll fall. But when you raise the mast until it stops and then place at least one piece of wood on the base, you can use it like normal. A mast can normally take three hits from cannonballs or one chain shot before it falls, so with one piece of wood on it, it'll only take one cannonball. So make sure once you get moving again, you get it patched up fully. Now onto holes in the ship's hole. They come in three tiers. This is a tier one caused by hitting an island and fills up the ship the slowest and is the fastest to repair. Here's a tier two, typically caused by cannonballs hitting your ship, which as you'd expect, fills up the ship faster than a tier one and is a little slower to repair. And tier 3 holes are typically caused by multiple cannonballs hitting the same spot, which fill up the ship fastest and take the longest to repair. Try to prioritize these as well as holes in the bottom deck over smaller holes or holes in the mid deck. Also, bailing is super important. The water is what actually sinks your ship, so prioritize water level over repairing. Sea of Thieves is a game where you can always improve. The faster and more efficient you're able to do things like sailing around, doing voyages, and repairing, the better. But eventually you're going to have to fight someone or something. So when there isn't anything but islands and forts passing you by, consider using some of those supplies to dial in your aim. Z forts are a great way to do this, as there are enemies and tons of different stationary targets you can try to see if you can hit, but they fire cannons at you as well. Rather poorly, I might add, but not only will you be able to learn how to keep your target on your broadside, as well as improve cannon aim, you'll also be practicing repairing while under fire. You might also finish the fort while you're at it, so loot on top of practice, what's better? 
And that's it for me today, folks. Keep your eyes on the horizon for the next video. And if you'd like to support this video and the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the bell to be notified for the next upload. You can also catch me live on twitch.tv slash it's desert fox, where you can ask me questions about Sea of Thieves, or you can hang out and chat with us. The link is in the description, as well as my other socials.